Good morning to you. Thank you. Your dog's listening attentively. <laughs> yes. He does. Well, look at all of the puppies with us at worship this morning by my watch, which tells me that it's time for us to worship. So I invite you to mute yourself if you aren't already, and, and we will begin with a prelude offered to us by Roger. How do I put it on mute? Well, because they're starting. Am I the one who's supposed to be doing this?
Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Roger, for bringing the organ to us. I really appreciate it. And I wish all of us this morning and, and want you to know that the leadership of your congregation is trying to keep everyone connected during these crazy times. And I'm so appreciative that we have a team that cares about one another, including me, a part of that team. So um, even having you here today is uh, just such a joy. It reminds us that we are a community that loves one another. And I hope that you're taking time to read the articles in our weekly e-news, not just the article from me, but all of the other little articles that are in there. And I want to lift up that sometimes reading those articles is a little, a little bit like playing hide and seek. You have to look carefully and find the words that are in a different color and are underlined. And if you double click on that, it's like magic underneath of it has far more information. So for example, um, our faith community nurse, Celeste Hilde wrote a uh, vaccination schedules and she has a lot of other recommendations uh, for all of us on um, different kinds of tests or shots or whatever we might need. So pay attention to that, look for Celeste article and go in there and see all of the information and the links that she has gathered together for the welfare of all of us. And um, also there's an article about interfaith coalition. And um, this is a year that we could all join the annual meeting. It is the year that Laura Harker is retiring and we will be recognizing her as well as hearing updates about family promise, et cetera. And so find the link in there in our e-news and then register yourself and you can participate. It's an online, safe, beautiful, um, always a beautiful celebration of the work that we do in partnership with Interfaith Coalition. Next, tomorrow is our next Morning Into Unity vigil. So hear me carefully. Last week, we had a beautiful service. Some of you joined us in the parking lot. Some of you joined us on Zoom. Some of you joined us on Facebook. And I really appreciated everybody coming out together. Tomorrow, I will be in the sanctuary. And one of my colleagues of faith, who is a rabbi, will be in the sanctuary with me. We will be social distanced. And um, you can see that we have the sanctuary decorated and ready for that service. Last week's vigil was focused on the grief and mourning of all of the losses that we have had. And this week's vigil is, is more about the unity and hope. And so I invite you, we will acknowledge the losses again, but I invite you to come and participate tomorrow Please share this with your family and your friends. You are invited not to come to the church parking lot tomorrow, but to enter through Zoom or Facebook Live. And if you look at our newsletter and go down to the Morning into Unity, click on that link, you will see where you can register. I also wanted to let you know when you register, they have a little link if you want to make a donation to their cause. You don't have to, this is a free event. But I do want everyone to know that they sent us a beautiful banner that we have on the outside of the church, a bolt of purple fabric and um, masks for the people who are participating in it and battery operated candles. No charge to our congregation for that. And after the vigil, we can use those uh, resources any way that we see fit. And so, um, again, it's a beautiful service. I invite you to join me and um, do so in a way that is safely distanced. And um, the weather forecast says that it's going to be pouring down rain tomorrow. So we thought between the rain and the wind and the traffic and the train, it's just going to be easier to do our pieces from inside the sanctuary. All right. 
And there's also a beautiful letter from the trustees. And for the children in our midst, there's even a children's corner. And, and uh, Rebecca has posted an article about trip or treat in Whatcom County. And there's even a page that you could print off and color if you'd like for Halloween. So I think that's all of the announcements for this morning. But please do poke around and so that you feel connected and um, stay connected with all of us in all of the ways that our church is active. All right, now I need to take a breath with that long list of, of announcements and I invite you to take a breath with me. And I would like to begin by acknowledging that we gathered today on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish peoples who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin throughout the San Juan Islands in the North Cascade watershed from time immemorial. Please join me in expressing our deepest respect and gratitude to our indigenous neighbors, the Lummi Nation and the Nooksack tribe for their enduring care and protection of our shared lands and waterways. And in doing so, let us remember that no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So that breath. I offer you words shared to me by our beloved member and friend, Karen Neswald. As we take a deep breath and blow it out, I invite you to repeat after me. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. And the presence of God watches over me all through this day. The light of the universe surrounds us. The love of the universe enfolds us each with divine health and miracles. The power of the universe protects us and the presence of the universe watches over us all and all is well. Jesus, we are here. We are present, we are grounded. We are ready to worship, amen. Please join me in singing our first hymn, Jesus, We Are Here. Good morning, everyone. Let's begin with our opening prayer. God of abundant blessings, we gather in the shelter of this virtual space to offer you what belongs to you, our devotion and praise. Help us center our hearts and guide us and our hearts and minds on the gifts of being in your presence. 
May your message for us this morning fill us with strength as we fulfill our calling to be partners in ministry with you for the sake of your world. May it be so. Amen. Lighting the candle of peace and lighting the peace, uh, passing the peace of Christ and lighting the peace candle. Let us trust in Christ's peace that surpasses all understanding. Let us rely on the grace of Jesus that transcends all logic and may love incarnate break all barriers that divide us. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you and also with you. Peace. Hmm. Thank you, Ken. I have a story that I know many of us have heard before, and it um, was written by Douglas Wood, and it's entitled Old Turtle. And if you haven't seen this book, I would invite you, especially parents, to check it out at the library so you can see the pictures. This is my own copy, and it's, um, I'm just going to read it to you. I'm not going to try to show you the pictures, so I'd like you to see those at another time. Once, long, long ago, yet somehow not so very long, when all of the animals and the rocks, and the winds and waters and trees and birds and fish and all of the beings of the world could speak and understand one another, there began an argument. It began softly at first quiet as the first breeze that whispered, he's a wind who is never still. Quiet as the stone that answered, he is a great rock that never moves. Gentle as the mountain that rumbled, God is a snowy peak high above the clouds. And the fish in the ocean that answered, God is a swimmer in the dark blue depths of the sea. No, said the star, God is a twinkling and a shining far, far away. No, replied the ant, God is a sound and a smell and a feeling who is very, very close. God, insisted the antelope, is a runner, swift and free, who loves and leaps and races with the wind. She is a great tree, murmured the willow, a part of the world always growing and always giving. You are wrong, argued the island. God is separate and apart. God is like a shining sun, far above all things, added the blue sky. No, he is a river who flows through the very heart of things, thundered the waterfall. She is a hunter, roared the island. God is gentle, chirped the robin. He is powerful, growled the bear. And the argument grew louder and louder and louder until stop a new voice spoke it rumbled loudly like thunder and it whispered softly like butterflies sneezes the voice seemed to come from why it seemed to come from old turtle Old Turtle hardly, hardly ever said anything and certainly never argued about God. But now Old Turtle began to speak. God is indeed deep, she said to the fish in the sea, and much higher than high, she told the mountains. 
He is swift and free as the wind and still and solid as a great rock, she said to the breezes and the stones. She is the life of the world, Turtle said to the willow, always close by, yet beyond the farthest twinkling light, she told the ant and the star. God is gentle and powerful above all things and within all things. God is all that we dream of and all that we seek, said old turtle. All that we come from and all that we can find, God is. Old turtle had never said so much before and all the beings of the world were surprised and became very quiet. But old turtle had one more thing to say. There will soon be a new family of beings in the world, she said, and they will be strange and wonderful. They will be reminders of all that God is. They will come in many colors and shapes with different faces and different ways of speaking. Their thoughts will soar to the stars, but their feet will walk on the earth. They will possess many powers. They will be strong, yet tender. A message of love from God to the earth and a prayer from the earth back to God. And the people came. But the people forgot. They forgot that they were a message of love and a prayer from the earth. And they began to argue about who knew God and who did not and where God was and was not and whether God was or was not. And often the people misused their powers and hurt one another or killed one another. And they hurt the earth until finally the forest began to die. And the rivers and the oceans and the plants and the animals and the earth itself, because the people could not remember who they were or where God was, until one day there came a voice, like the growling of thunder, but as soft as butterfly sneezes. Please stop. The voice seemed to come from the mountains who rumbled. Sometimes I see God swimming in the dark blue depths of the sea, and from the ocean whose side he is often among the snow-capped peaks reflecting the sun. And from the stone who said, I sometimes feel her breath as she blows by. And from the breeze who whispered, I feel his, his still presence as I dance among the rocks. And the star declared, God is very close. And the island added, his love touches everything. And after a long, lonesome, and scary time, the people listened and began to hear and to see God in one another and in the beauty of the earth. An old turtle smiled, and so did God. Old Turtle by Douglas Wood. May the truth of this book reside in our hearts today. And may we remember that God is inside of every being, inside of you and inside of me and inside of the beauty of our beautiful earth. Amen. And let us sing to the children. May the love of God fill you from your head down to your toes. May it wiggle through your fingers and dance upon your nose. May the people all around you help you live so loving grows. May the love of God fill you up until it overflows. Thank you, Veronica. 
My friends, Jesus followed the elders of his faith. Paul followed the way of Jesus, and so do we. In the ways that we love and honor our God. So with our whole heart and our mind and our soul, let us love our neighbors as ourselves and let us center in this time to be a people in prayer. Gracious God, you know the prayers of our heart. We ask for your healing for the unity of our nation and our leaders. Bless each person across our beautiful nation. And we ask for your blessings on our ballots as we prayerfully use our civic voices for the good of all people. We ask for your blessings for the people that share this planet and call other parts of this planet their home. And we pray for your blessing upon their leaders as well. May we stand firm in our faith as we humbly care for our neighbors as ourselves. Oh God, hear our prayers and in your love, answer. We pray for your healing for those locally and around this world who suffer, who suffer with mental, physical, and emotional illnesses of any kind and of every kind. As the numbers rise in the pandemic and as we enter into the flu season, please keep us grounded in your grace. Help all of us with our well being so that we might provide wholeness for all beings. Oh God, hear our prayers and in your love, answer. We pray for those who are recovering from surgery recently, and we pray for those who will be having surgery in the near future. We pray for those who have recently been diagnosed with illnesses and for those who are separated from loved ones because they are in hospital or care facilities. And we rely upon your healing, your grace, so we ask you, O oh God, to hear our prayers and in your love, answer. And if you have a prayer that's burning in your hearts, I invite you to unmute yourself for a moment and share those prayers with us now. Pray for our children and our elders. And everyone in between. Oh God, hear our prayer. I ask for God's guidance as I word this prayer, <laughs> asking him to provide me for the words because of the conflicts that we have between each other in, in the world. And I am especially lifting up those who um, don't believe in what has been offer to us the suggestions for taking care of our personal safety and the safety of others. Mm. Um, and I say this with pain because I have a personal reasons for this. I offer this prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh God, hear mm -hmm. our prayer. And in your love, answer. I pray for peace in people's hearts as we go through this election. Oh God, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Love. Love answer. Mm -hmm. I pray for the children and the teachers and the administrators in schools who really don't know what's coming up. Yeah. And for the parents as well. Oh God, hear our prayers and hear our love. Love answer. Mm -hmm. I pray that we all keep Jesus at the center of our lives and in the center of our hearts because that's what's I think going to keep us focused on on the, the best way of how to treat one another and to just love one another as, as God, as Jesus instructed us to do. Yeah. Oh God, hear our prayer. Thank you, Veronica. And in your love, answer. Father, mother, creator of all that is and all that will be, hear us now as we unite our voices together. May they flow together with the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we pray with all of the disciples of Jesus across time and space, saying together, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us prepare for scripture by praying a prayer for elimination. Let us draw near to God while discovering the universal truths found in Holy Scripture. And God will draw near to us as we move to use these truths in our service and ministry. May it be so. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22, as found in the Common English Bible. Then the Pharisees met together to find a way to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples along with the supporters of Herod to him. Teacher, they said, we know that you are genuine and that you teach God's way as it really is. We know that you are not swayed by people's opinions because you don't show favoritism. So tell us what you think. Does the law allow people to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Knowing their evil motives, Jesus replied, why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used to pay the tax. And they brought him a denarian. Whose image and inscription is this, he asked. Caesar's, they replied. Then he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were astonished. And they departed. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Ken. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O beloved God, our rock and our redeemer, whose truth and light continue to enlighten us in wonderful and mysterious ways. Thanks be to you. Amen. Seek this truth that comes to us from Psalm 96. Sing to Yahweh a new song. Sing to Yahweh all the earth. Sing to Yahweh 
Bless God's holy name. Proclaim God's salvation day after day. Tell of God's glory among the nations. Tell God's wonderful, wondrous deeds to all people. For Yahweh is great, most worthy of praise. Yahweh is to be revered above all gods. All the gods of the nations are as nothing. They don't exist. Yahweh created the universe. Splendor and majesty are in God's presence. Power and beauty in God's sanctuary. Families of the nations give all honor to Yahweh. Give glory and praise God. By tribute to the glorious name of Yahweh, worship God. Worship Yahweh, majestic in holiness. Tremble before Yahweh, all the earth. Say among the nations, Yahweh's reign supreme. The world stands firm and unshakable. Yahweh will judge each nation with equity. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and all that it holds resound. Let the fields and all that there is in them exalt. Let all of the forest sing for joy at the presence of Yahweh, for God is coming. God is coming to rule the earth, to rule the world with justice and the nations with truth. Friends, this is the Jesus. This is the God, the Holy One that Jesus related to. This was a psalm that he sang with his peoples. So I bring you back to that beautiful scripture that Ken shared with us. When the students of the Pharisees and their rivals, the Herodians, approached Jesus, they knew what they were doing. The Herodians were a priestly class. They were following the rules. They achieved their power and their influence through the co-op, oops, I'm sorry, yes, through their cooperation with the Roman authorities. Hear that again, the Herodians, they were collaborating with the forces that were oppressing the Hebrew people. They were aligning themselves, which gave them power. And the Pharisees on the other hand, they were strident in their devotion to the law of Moses. And they were extremely put off by the cooperation of the Herodians with the Romans. In fact, they thought such collusion was treason. As much as they despised each other, they figured out that even through their suspicion and hate of one another, they had a mutual desire, a desire to discredit Jesus. Reading this scripture, I can't help but recognize that we haven't evolved much as human beings, have we? We find a group that we want to follow and then we work really hard to discredit one another. These leaders of the synagogue, these leaders of our Hebrew faith were trying to discredit Jesus, who we call our savior. So they came up with a tricky question designed to trip him up, to trip up this charismatic radical rascal that was preaching equality and equity for all of the people in the name of his beloved Abba, the unspeakable one in the name of Yahweh in the name of God. So think about it. They thought that they had him now. 
with their brilliant idea. They weren't asking him some open-ended question to be curious about his ways of leadership. No, they designed a question that had a yes or no answer, nothing else. And the truth is embedded in this worship, that question that they ask him could not be answered with a yes, no question without offending one of the groups. Either the Herodians or the Pharisees were going to be outrageously angry with him. And that would have affected the people that were following him. For the, for the Pharisees, even touching a coin depicting the former emperor Tiberius Caesar with the inscription, Tiberius Caesar, son of the deified Augustus. So that coin suggested that Tiberius was divine and equal with God. Can you hear that? And can you imagine how offended they would be? So then we look at the Herods. They would have been offended by saying that we are not to pay taxes to the occupying government. That would have been treason against them. So they had him in what we would call today a pickle. No matter how he answered, yes or no, he was going to have the group of people angry with him. They were trying to take away his power. So listen carefully. He was either going to be called out treason against Rome or treason against the law of Moses. The ruling authorities of these, this sect of Jewish tradition were out to get him. So Jesus simply answered by asking a question of his own. He asked for a coin. That's an important detail. He wasn't carrying coins of, of Tiberius Caesar in his own pockets. So he asked for a coin for himself to look at, to examine. And he simply asked them, whose image is on this coin? And when they told him, he said, give Caesar what's due, rightfully due back to him. And then the key, pay attention, return and give back what is due, not only to the Caesar, but also to God. The coin was stamped with the image of the emperor. However, Jesus was stating loud and clear, the group of Herodians and the group of Pharisees and Jesus himself, they bore the image of God. There was no more competition. We might have to pay a tax to our government, dear ones, just like those of long ago, but our allegiance our allegiance belongs to God alone. As believers of the way of Christ, our complete devotion belongs to the great I am. Those standing around Jesus then, and those of us calling ourselves disciples today must decide where our ultimate loyalty lies. Our allegiance belongs to God. And if God is love, we must love our God with our whole hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our souls. And as Jesus commanded, we must love our neighbors as ourselves. So I ask you today, in the year 2020, to be prayerful in your actions. Pray over the earthly leaders. 
And as you make your voice heard in the world, make sure that it aligns with your faith. Always remember that you, you have been created in the image of our beloved creator, Yahweh, the supreme being who adores us and deserves our adoring praise. Let us work for unity instead of division. Let us work for healing and reparation. Let us work for love. Amen. Please join me in our second hymn, We Will Take What You Offer. The first time I'll use the word fed, and then you'll see the little asterisk there, and then the second time through we'll use led. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. We will take what you offer, we will live by your word. We will love one another and be fed by you, Lord. We will take what you offer, we will live by your word. We will love one another and be fed by you, Lord. We will take what you offer, we will live by your word. We will love one another and be led by you, Lord. We will take what you offer, we will live by your word. We will love one another and be led by Lord, we will love one another and be led by you, Lord. It's really good to be able to bask in pictures of our church as well as being able to see each other. So good morning. Our stewardship team met last week to plan activities for this fall season of giving. And of course, just like churches all around us, we talked about the impact of COVID. As we talked, it became increasingly clear of all of the impacts this virus has had on us as a church. Eventually, during our discussion, we focused on two ideas. First, how has the virus impacted you as a disciple for our church and as a disciple into our community? And second, how has our stewardship helped to identify the needs and gifts that can transform life in our Whatcom County Ferndale neighborhood? Well, as you can see, Beth Marceau has artfully and creatively represented our stewardship theme, Bridging Our Connections. Here are those two questions again. Today and over the next five weeks, we'll pursue these two questions as we pray and explore what we have done and what we can do through our yearly pledges. Beth and I will interview both members of our church and our community. Again, our theme is the role of stewardship in building bridges between the members of our congregation 
and then out into the community. Here this morning, we're going to talk with Kay Sutcliffe and Bob Ogmanson. A word of caution here, when we recorded, our volume levels were strangely high, so you may have to turn your volume down. This morning. All right, let's begin. Our interviewees today are Kay Sutcliffe and Bob Ogmanson. Uh, Kay, how do you see us caring for the congregation during these difficult COVID, COVID times? Well, um, we've prepared our spaces in the church building um, so that anyone who comes into the building is safe and secure. Um, we've managed to figure out a plan for um, tracking um, our member, our uh, uh, people as they come and go. And uh, we have safe entries, safe restrooms, and safe, uh, the main office especially, keeping it safe for the workers who have to come and go, such as Rebecca. We have also reached out to our members in the congregation to help them with, uh, to, to reach out to them with phone calls. Oh, no. Mailing and mailing and video discs of our services, especially for those who are not able to join us on Zoom Church. Okay, thank you. Bob, what kinds of stewardship have you seen? Well, to add to Kay's list, we've had uh, many, many volunteers help around the church uh, since the uh, completion of the roofing project with touch-up painting and uh, work on the gutters. And the grounds has been kept up very well. And we especially want to thank Brad Hand for his uh, consistent uh, manicuring of the lawn. Uh, we've also cut our utility bills uh, way down with the uh, furnaces shut down for the most part. We've saved on gas bills, and we no longer have a garbage bill for the time being. Um, what little garbage we do accumulate, uh, we have people that just take it home and disperse of it themselves. So we have a lot of, uh, a lot of participants helping us in that way. Thank you. Okay, sometimes people see short stewardship as just paying the bills. What do you hope for, for stewardship beyond just paying the bills? Well, we've, um, so twice this summer, we've had um, food bank roundups, and we're all currently doing uh, coat distribution in a very safe manner out of the church. Um, and we're trying to look forward to a, a future where things are clean, tidy, and safe, and we can continue those special uh, community meals and, and different outreaches to the community. We'd all, we're also planning on looking long and hard at how to set up the uh, Loving Tree Preschool for the future and open safely as can be be accommodated in the future. Thank you. Bob, same question. How do you see, how do you see stewardship beyond just paying the bills? Well, we, uh, we are continuing our support for the Interfaith Coalition and the many good projects that uh, they lead. And we also are uh, participating in help with Family Promise. Uh, and uh, we, especially look forward to the uh, Saturday community meal uh, again one day when uh, we are able to open up. Okay, thank you. Well, I wanna thank both of you for agreeing to be uh, on the interview this morning uh, and to thank you both for the work that I know that you do here to support the congregation. At the same time, I wanna thank all of those that are watching via Zoom or Facebook Live for the work that you do to support us, especially during this last half year. Is Ken still with us? I don't, I don't see him, so I will go ahead and call for the offering. 
He's here. I don't know if you can see him in the background. Yeah, he went dead. So okay, okay. So I will continue. Um, boldly, excuse me. Boldly, boldly trusting God will bless our ministry with long life. Let us joyfully lift up our offerings to God as a sign of our gratitude. And so you know what you are able to do and share and participate in the life of the church. And we give you gratitude for that. But we ask for God's blessing to rain down on all of us. If you are prepared to share an offering with the church, you can mail it in to PO Box 186. Or you can go to the website and hit the donation button. And, and if you do that, we invite you to add just a little bit more for the processing fee because that is charged to the church when you do it that way. Or if you are inclined and um, are able to, you can make arrangements with your church and they can, your church, you can make arrangements with your bank. <laughs> And your bank can automatic do an automatic payment, and that doesn't cost you anything, and it doesn't cost the church anything. So um, those are different ways that we, during this COVID time, when we can't get together and pass the plate, we can still share our resources to do the ministry of United Church of Ferndale. So thank you. And so now let us pray. Gracious and holy God, words alone cannot express our gratitude for your grace-filled love. Thank you for all that you have gifted to us. We joyfully offer these gifts back to you. Bless these offerings, that they may become for others the same love that we have experienced abundant with your nurturing grace. Amen. And in response, please join me in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit. Holy Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And for the final musical offering today, um, there's a video that will be played of God be with you till we meet again. Thank <laughs> you. 
Amen. Beautiful. Yes, thank you. That was so beautiful. And before I offer the benediction, I have two things I would like to lift up. One is that our um, beloved member, Sabelle Cook, has posted on our Facebook Live where she is joining us to please hold her daughter, Alexis, who is up in Canada going to school. And because of the border closure, um, she hasn't been able to be home and she has six more months of school. I know, I know this for a fact that she has six more months of school. So we want to extend our prayers to Alexa to stay strong and focused while she's still in her mama's words, stuck in Canada. And the second is I want out of heartfelt thanks. I would like to thank Rebecca. Um, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that none of you see to putting worship service together. So thank you, Rebecca, for your piece in that. And thank you, Ken, for being a um, lay reader and for offering the um, stewardship video today. And thank you, Veronica, for your depth of passion and your gift of music. And we're still working to make it easier for you. And thank you, Roger. Thank you for your dedication of playing both the organ at the church and your, your devices at home, your piano and your um, mobile organ. Hearing the sounds of music, even though we can't sing together, um, really touches our souls. I speak for us collectively. I know it touches mine. So, um, Thank you all. It takes a village to come together. And for everyone else who is gathered with us on Zoom or on Facebook Live, those who will be looking at Facebook Live later and those who will be joining this worship service by looking um, on YouTube, we are a community. And there's nothing that can keep us from the love of God. And that's why we gather. So thank you all. It would be pointless to do this all by oneself. So it, it's so meaningful to come together and to know that we are united even through the coronavirus. So I offer you, this is what I've been lighting here is my candle of life. May the light of God surround you the love of God enfold you, the power of God protect you, the presence of God watch over you all through this day. May the light of the universe surround us, the love of the universe enfold us each with divine health and miracles. May the power of the universe protect us and the presence of the universe watch over us and all is well. All is well. Go in peace until we meet again. And hopefully many of you will be meeting with us tomorrow evening for Morning into Unity. Amen.
so beautiful. Thank you. And um, we hope that you'll stay for a breakout room and have a few minutes to, do, to share with one another how you're doing. Um, it's, you have to provide your own beverage. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> um, um, it is good to connect beyond the worship service. Um, so please do. And for those who are on Facebook Live, we love you, we miss you. And we hope that you'll continue to connect with us in all ways. Be well, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>